Maha Shoujo's sight made a splash at the start of the season with perhaps the most literal expression of edge we'd ever seen in anime. And since then, that perception of things has largely continued to define the show in the eyes of the community. However, there is a real human truth that the series gets to in and amongst all that gory, melodramatic glory. In spite of how far it goes with things, I think this anime has a surprisingly solid grasp of a particular way trauma can affect people. Especially in being trans online, I've run into this dynamic of social communities filled with these sort of messy, unsteady relationships. And while this is not at all unique to these communities, I think the particular circumstances faced by trans people do lend themselves to the communities they create often having these dynamics. Trans kids who come out to their parents face violence 10% of the time, and are kicked out of their houses 8% of the time, contributing to staggering homelessness statistics among queer people generally, and a heavy weight on the minds of many. If 10% of parents are that hostile, the other 90% aren't all happy and accepting. There is, of course, a range of reactions before we reach those ideal parents, all sorts of only slightly less egregious demeanments of their children and their identities. Then there's the many trans people who don't reveal their identities, knowing these negative responses are coming should they do so, or at least likely enough to come that they've got good reason to fear it happening. Whether it be a Twitter social circle, or a Discord server, a group of trans people that comes together is likely to have seen some shit TM that are in excess of that of the general population, and a lot of said shit may be unresolved. And to be clear, this is not a transgenders are mentally ill and unstable thing, this is a society is often really disgustingly cruel to us, and so yeah, the issues humans develop when faced with cruelty tend to be more common among trans people thing. Finally though, what all this somewhat depressing context establishing is in service of is pointing out how well Maho Shoujo's site ends up paralleling that. In this series, it is the titular site that creates a set of people whose difficulties in life have been far greater than the given persons. Appropriate, then, that a trans girl herself is among them. As over-the-top and messy as the show can be, I think one thing it actually nails pretty well is capturing the social dynamic that often forms among these people, and the kinds of relationships that result from it. Among the team of magical girls that ends up being formed to fight against the site administrators in the series, there's a member who murdered another's best friend, and who she, in turn, has actively tried to kill as revenge for that. Later, a girl joins whose life was ruined from a state of general contentment all the way down to a low point where she'd also become a magical girl by others on that team. Yet still, they get along in some manner, enjoy their time together, are able to comfort and uplift each other because ultimately they have a greater understanding of what each of them has gone through than anyone else. Now obviously in real life, the stakes aren't nearly as high as murder, and interpersonal grievances aren't intrinsic elements like they are in sight. We aren't trying to write a story here, we don't need all that dramatic tension. However, there still often exists a level of tenseness. You've gathered together a bunch of people who've likely been burned in the past, who've been in some way traumatized by those around them, and so there can exist a fear there, a fear of opening up, a fear of hurting others the way you've been hurt, a fear of being hurt, and they aren't wholly unwarranted because sometimes people get hurt. Sometimes people slip up and say something venomous or cruel because that's what they've largely known. When matters of personal conviction have had stakes as high as they've had for people, existential stakes, disagreements on those fronts can lead to anger, to lashing out, to running away. Maho Shoujo site explores those tense friendships formed by people who will inherently be a bit volatile or unstable because of their past experiences and places in life, those social environments they create for themselves, and ultimately finds them to be worthwhile and, in their own way, beautiful. These are people rendered imperfect by a very imperfect world, and they have taken that lot in life and formed these communities anyway, conscious of the fact that this imperfection will be present within what they create, but willing to take on that challenge because they know that this is the way to move beyond that and start to heal. Well, no, they don't actually know, but they are at the very least willing to believe in it. So in these spaces that traumatized people form, tension and interpersonal pain are accepted due to the belief that things will be worth it. 
These hedgehogs huddle together and accept being pricked by each other's spines because without that warmth from others they would freeze. And that's what makes it beautiful, the fact that through their very existence these communities are testaments to hope. Hope that you can one day be okay, or at least less not okay, and a willingness to embrace the sometimes painful human messiness that comes with pursuing that hope. Key here is the fact that this is not a glorification of suffering, of trauma and pain. This is not a fetishized perception of some macabre beauty. The series itself certainly risks falling into being one. It happily embraces the aesthetic cool factor of its protagonist bleeding from her eyes and the such. So while it served as the inspiration for this idea, I am jumping off from the text a bit in exploring it. It is the solidarity and recovery and hope that carry that beauty. One of the biggest perspective opening experiences I've had was in a discord with a bunch of other trans people, pretty early on in its creation, when one of them brought up suicidal feelings they were having. There was an atmosphere of weighty mortality there, because among a group of people whose suicide attempt rate is around 40%, you have to face at the very least the prospect of death, if not death itself. I had to step back and go, oh, oh right. Just on a statistical basis alone, this is a very real possibility here for at least someone. My eyes were opened to the fact that this was a relevant risk and concern underlying everything else going on, not in the way that there's a risk someone you know will get in a deadly car crash, but to a much more immediate and visceral degree. I don't think that weight has fully left me, will ever leave me. It's akin to that weight of mortality carried by those who've had rushes with death, but also to a degree informed by my position as part of this greater whole. Thoughts of, man, I'd really feel bad to contribute to that 40% and maintain the depressing statistic. And yet, things went on. Comfort and advice, attempted assistance was offered, and soon we were sharing more benign anecdotes again, laughing again, existing together in that space. Just as these girls do, we find a way to make our own oases of happiness, and promise to return to their shores again, fighting on in pursuit of that hope. I think that incidentally or otherwise, Maho Shoujo Sight is a legitimately powerful portrayal of this effect, of this beautiful human resilience and will to recover, and I'm thankful to it for that. I do want to emphasize at the end here that all this trauma and suffering I speak of is not nearly the totality of the trans experience. Far too often, any and all media portrayal is this sort of cry porn exploiting the narrative of the suffering transgender to play off of surface level sympathies. It just so happens that in exploring some of my experiences as a trans person through the lens of this particular series, a lot of that was the darker experiences. Gee, wonder why that was. <laughs> anyway, I'm back on track here a bit, already have more than a single video this month, and I've got one more here that should be out before its end, so look forward to that. A massive, massive thank you to Psyker, Car Keys, Mathwiz97, Jonathan Conley, Skylar Morrow, Tyler Monk, Sakamoto Mio, Tincho37, Josh Grant, Gigafag, Lord Liquid Bacon the Third, Stella Luna, Joaquim Aldfelt, Darian De Sotel, David McCown, Kieran Rice, Hijort Dog, Matt Bekelder, Smokeweed Sephiroth420, and J Man 4747, along with all my other patrons. Everyone's support on there is invaluable, and I cannot express that strongly enough.